This might come as a bit of a surprise, but I don't actually own any 40k alt models. But after seeing Midwinter Mini Scratch Build Titan, I got a bit of an urge to build one myself. Though not as big as guys, because if I built something on that scale, I'd probably be the one sleeping in the shed rather than the Titan. I decided to build a Gorkonal instead. And I looked at the original Games Workshop kit and I wasn't really feeling the vibe. The vibe I was liking was the classic 80s artwork. It made them look a lot more like the Walker in Mars Attacks and a little bit more comedic and cartoonish. I liked how this aesthetic really wasn't taking itself too seriously and it let me have a bit of a laugh and a bit of a joke with what I was building. Don't run, we are your friends. The main shape that this scratch build would be designed around is a fun sized Pringle tube. This only cost me 70p so I'm already making some vast savings on the £70 price tag on the Games Workshop kit. I used one mil chipboard to bulk out the rest of the shapes of the Gorkonal. The more basic the shapes the better as I didn't want to overcomplicate the project and I really wanted this to look like a big pile of scrap that should not be moving but thanks to the power of Orky Collective stupidity manages to walk and crush space marines. This also meant that I could be really fast and rough with the build process. A lot of the time I wasn't taking really precise measurements, I was just tracing out the angles onto the chipboard and cutting it out which really sped up the process. Now, I wanted this project to look like a big pile of crap, but not an obvious big pile of crap, if you get what I mean. So I used 0.25mm plastic card, punching a variety of different holes into the plastic with some craft punches I got online. And this helps to add a little bit more complexity to each of the individual panels and makes them look a lot more cobbled together. There are a few areas where I left some really obvious gaps and decided to keep them in as I thought it could look quite good as damage detailing. Now when it comes to panel lining to make the plastic card look really convincing, I just used a panel line scriber and made each individual piece of metal and then used my pin drill to add in the rivet holes. Now this works really, really well. The more random you are with each panel line that you draw, the more convincing it is as a cobbled together piece of metal. I used all of these plastic tubes for the arms and legs and it's actually from a model kit of the K7 space station from Star Trek the original series. But if you don't have access to that kit, you could probably just use some 15mm PVC pipe and that would do the job for you. When it comes to all of the angles, I just wrapped a piece of sandpaper around one of the tubes and filed it down until I got a nice circle joint. Each of the joints is actually the top of a yogurt tube and then I capped it off with an off cut from one of the hole punches. I used a 40 millimeter base and the top of a milk carton for the feet. I then piled in lots of hot glue to kind of pad it out and add some extra weight and strength, gluing together the joint with super glue. And it looks a bit khaki <laughs> but I think it works kind of nicely and then I used a pill bottle to hide the leg joint packing it out with hot glue. For rivets you can use the tiny balls from the inside of a Brita filter. It's relatively cheap it will set you back less money than buying one from Infowars. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the freaking frogs gay. You do you Alex you do you. I poured the balls onto the panel dry fitting them into each individual hole. This took a little bit of time, but if it's a flat surface, this is a much quicker way than trying to put each individual rivet in with tweezers. It actually worked out a lot quicker because then you just super glue each one in place when you've already lined them all up nicely. For the shoulder joint on the claw arm, I used a bottle cap and I have no idea what this counter is. I think I stole it from one of my daughter's sets. I spent a ridiculous amount of time pondering how to build up the arms and legs. I actually haven't been too well recently and have had a lot of brain fog and spent hours staring at random bits of junk just wondering how I was going to form all of this together into a coherent shape that looks like it's able to move. In the end I just ended up throwing bits together with hot glue and just hoping it would kind of work. Amazingly, I've managed to make it work somehow, even with my incredibly confused brain. Just a little word on drill safety. I had no drill safety during the whole project and managed to drill my hand probably about three or four times. So please use a vice. Oh, that was close. 
I used a lot of these wooden dowels from lollipop sticks, actually. It's always worth keeping hold of these because you never know when you're gonna use them. And with this project, they actually provided lots of strength to pin all of the arms and legs. Putting the weapon together was a bit of a quandary because I didn't want to go too big and my first reaction is to just make a gigantic cannon. Because in case you couldn't tell, I have some minor issues with impulse control. So I used some brass rod, bits from my wife's old inhaler. This little brown piece is actually a plant pot from a railway kit. I was in two minds whether or not to build a claw from scratch, but I decided I kind of had to if I wanted to make it as an actual Gorkonaut rather than just some random orky robot. So I used some 4mm styrene, marked it out and just cut it out generally, and then just snapped the pieces off, and then used my master to sketch out the other two pieces. Because it's plastic hard, it's easily cut and trimmed down into shape. I used my Dremel to bevel all of the edges. Fuck! Drill safety, motherfuckers. Drill safety. I drilled all the way through the hand of the claw and used these ice pole sticks to try and mount the two closing claws together all the way through it. This gave the claw something firm to be mounted onto and hopefully would mean that it would be very, very difficult for them to be knocked off in future. I cut up tons of angular jagged panels of 2.5 mil plastic card and glued them all over the legs and arms, twisting them round on a small styrene rod. I made up some pistons out of styrene rod and I need these bits from a little tic-tac-toe set I got out of a Christmas cracker about three years ago. One of the plus sides of Christmas is that you're going to have plenty of bits generated from crap presents in Christmas crackers. All round, the pistons will make your project look a lot more believable, even if it looks like a massive pile of crap that you've glued together with super glue. Adding pistons means that it looks a lot more believable that it's actually a moving object. When it comes to orcs, you have to suspend quite a lot of disbelief as it is. And by adding little details like these, it just helps to marry everything together and just make it that little bit more believable. The head, I used a measuring cup from one of my resin sets. There was an MDF base I stuck onto the top and I used 2.5mm plastic card for the spiky jaw and the eye sockets. I was really pleased with how this turned out as I was really rough with this process and I wasn't expecting it to look half as good as it did considering the amount of effort that I put into it. It was very, very slapdash and very quick. I used one of my tiny hole punches to cut out an actual eye socket. I cannot stress how much I love using these paper punches on styrene. You can create some really quick and easy shape on really thin styrene that you would have to spend ages painstakingly cutting out and filing. It wouldn't be a scratch build of mine if I didn't find some place to use nail art beads. With the face finally taking shape, a name for this guy just popped into my head and I couldn't call him anything different because he looks so much like Kevin from The Office, and now his name is Kevin. <laughs> what are you doing? I wanted to eat a pig in a blanket. In a blanket. Please adopt a Kevin this year for Christmas by supporting Murray's Minis on Patreon. Every year, war machines like Kevin are left out in the cold with no beakies to squash. For just two pounds a month, you can supply Kevin with an endless amount of space marines to run and chase and squash and be happy. Don't leave Kevins out in the cold this Christmas. Just two pounds a month will keep them happy and safe. I chopped up an old Glade air freshener and used my panel line scriber and drill to kind of add some extra detailing onto it. I realised the feet were looking a little bit short, so I took some 50mm bases this time and used a hole puncher to add some rivet lines. I took some old MDF kit bits just to add some extra detailing to the areas that were looking a little bit bare. Now this is where I cheated. I took some exhaust and oil drum containers from the Baneblade upgrade kits because the back was looking a little bit bare of details and to be honest, I didn't quite fancy cutting up tons of tubes to make exhausts and petrol containers. 
To cover up the massive gap, I decided to use an offcut of a pill bottle container. To finish off the model, I heated up some one mil pieces of styrene to finish off the armor panels. Textured them up, and there we have it. One scratch-built Gorkonaut. Let us know down in the comments if you would like to see more orky based scratch builds in the future. I'm kind of tempted to build a stomper now I've finished this guy, which would be a bit of a mad project, but I'm more than happy to take it on if you guys want to see it in the future. Thank you very much guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.